So now we're going to fasten the sheets to the joists. And of course, if you look at the fasteners that we have here, you want to make sure that they're in line with the joists. You want to make sure that you put um, screws six inches apart. They don't have to be exactly six inches. They can be around six inches. It's not like the inspector is going to look at something into you five and a half inches and they're going to tell you to rip apart the whole floor. But just make sure it's about that much. And we want to make sure that they're all in line with the joist. So you want to, what you want to do is you want to, um, where's the measuring tape? There it is. You want to measure the distance from the center of the joist to the edge. And you want to use that distance to mark lines, uh, mark dots, I mean. Connect those dots to make a line, and then uh, install screws along that line, six inches apart. We want to make sure that the screws actually touch the joists, so we want to install them about half an inch away from the edge. All right, and I believe that's all we talked about for the spacing of the fasteners. What's going to happen is I'm going to have Zami uh, install uh, I mean, draw the lines on the other side while I install it from this side. And the way that we're going to install the fasteners is we're going to start on one side, then work progressively towards the other side. Usually when you're installing things like furniture or something similar, you want to cover everything, all the corners with screws. We're not going to do it here because when we install screws here, we want to make sure that the uh, plywood doesn't warp. And if we put it in the corners first, there's a great chance of that happening. So we're going to do each line in sequence. We're not going to do all four corners. Similar to how we installed the walls. All right, let's get to it. I need my drill. Where is my drill? And here we go. So when we install this, oh, for the first one, I guess I can use these as guides. We want to make sure that these are as flush as possible. So, we want to make sure it's half an inch away from this corner and halfway, halfway inch from this edge and this edge. Okay. Okay. It's alright if it goes in a bit, you know. It's just securing it. But I'm thinking that it probably is bad if it sticks out because when you're installing your flooring, then you probably don't want your screws to stick out. So the distance between this screw and this screw is about six inches. It's actually less because the distance from this screw to the edge is six inches. So this is about five and a half, but you know what I mean. Okay. Same here. I do this for the entire uh, line, for every single line down the plywood sheet. Another interesting thing about uh, plywood sheathing is that you're actually supposed to install it so it's not four corners. You're supposed to, they recommend that you stag stagger them sort of like this. So it shouldn't have four corners touching. It should have maybe two, uh, two uh, touching at most. But in our case, these are actually two separate decks. So it's a bit different for us, and in the end, it doesn't really matter for us because we're not like building it like an actual deck. This is more like a like an enclosed room. And I guess that's that's not really accurate to what I'm saying, but in our case, we actually have more strength than is recommended by code. The way that we're doing it, especially with this double joist, this uh, the sister joist and everything else that we've accounted for with all the different methods like the blocks, we actually have more strength than is recommended by the code. So, you know, who cares if you put uh, put sheets four corners together? So, we're not going to stagger them, we're just going to install them, um, I guess, the, what's the best word? Like, parallel to each other? Like, the way that a checkerboard looks like. All right, so Zami, how's your experience with the uh, line making? Yes. So, you know, here, you know, at, at, at ESOMs, drawing a line is probably like one of the first things that they teach. Actually, in sixth grade, they teach us how to do sketching. And when you sketch, you're supposed to put, when you want to make a straight line, 
that is supposed to be a certain distance away from something, you're supposed to put three dots. Because, you know, two dots might be okay. You know, it would get you that straight line, but that third dot really makes sure that all three dots are collinear. They're all on the same plane, which makes sure that the line is actually straight. So, a zombie is applying those skills here. Because and that's important, because a zombie's actually not going to be you know, doing this work. He's more like a theoretical guy. At MIT, he's more like, instead of applied maths, he's more like theoretical maths, or I don't know, I don't know if that's the best analogy, but he's, gonna be, he's not gonna be doing this, the robots are gonna be doing this, and he's gonna be designing the robots, so he doesn't have to think about this. But it's good that he gets this sort of idea of how to do it, so that when he programs the robots, then he can tell them what to do. Or he can program it. Deep learning for it. Look at how he moves the tape. I like your strategy. The way I was, the way I did it first was I did three tapes, and for every tape, I did all all of the marks that were required for each link, so that you had to do it in less trips. And there we have it. We have well. Almost after the is going to be done, we have our plywood sheeting down. So I mentioned earlier that it doesn't have to be exactly six uh, inches apart, and that's because you can take a. Where's my level? There it is. You can take a level that has markings for the inches. You can put it next to your line. And just sort of like estimate where six inches is, and then just drive it in. You don't have to actually put like marks for every single one. You just eyeball it. Like I said, your inspector is not going to look at it and penalize you for five and a half inches. Actually, five and a half inches is within code. They won't look at it and say six and a half inches is wrong. But you can do this with all lines to make it a bit faster. Uh, I mean, to make to make the whole process a bit faster because this entire thing of screwing in the wood probably takes out about 15 minutes for one sheet. So you have to do this for all sheets and don't you, you don't even forget like, the caulk, I mean, the uh, putting on the adhesive and actually moving the uh, sheets. So you have to include, factor all of that into actually putting, installing the floor. But anyway, that's all for now. I know this video said a how-to, but I've said before, these videos are much more like vlogs. And you know, I wanna keep you guys informed. So that's why I add the little tidbits about information in my videos. Probably it results in a way longer video than it used to be, but that's why it's fun. So I'm Aima, I'm Zami, and thanks for watching. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe, and look at other videos on I especially the videos on converting our patio to a multi multipurpose room. Uh, like I said, our last video was about installing that foam. Our next video will probably have something to do with the flooring again. Maybe we'll put the uh, um, the actual floor on top or the underlayment, uh, or maybe we'll do the windows. I don't think the windows are coming soon. I think we still need to get them. We actually have two windows back there, but we only got two of them just to test fit them. So I think we ordered more after we made sure that they fit. So maybe that video will come in a month. So keep stay tuned for that one. But anyway, uh, today I showed you how to uh, install plywood sheathing or flooring. And it doesn't even just apply to a plywood, it can also be OSD. And for now, I'll see you next time. I'm Emma, that's Zami, and signing out. Done? Peace. Peace. <laughs>